Hi my loves and welcome to today's video, a flip through of all of last month's Inktober drawings. I asked you guys if there was anything that you wanted to know about this project so I'll be answering some of those most popular questions as we go. So the theme that I went with this time around was greenhouse essentials for potion makers and spell casters and a few people were a bit confused asking where I found the theme or where the prompts list was and so I thought I would just clarify that this was something that I came up entirely by myself and so it was my own personal project without a list of prompts. I actually came up with the idea the day before the month started so I didn't have a huge amount of time for preparation in the lead up to Inktober I actually already had an idea of what I'd be drawing I thought of doing something like haunted or cursed or evil plants like a werewolf bramble or a vampire ivy I don't know just making plants look like they had some kind of affliction or just a spooky theme and as I was coming up with what I could draw for each day one of the things that I thought of was a ghost moss which is something that you'll actually see I drew later on in the tour and I imagined that as a light moss in a bottle or jar which suddenly made me think of potions and so that is where my new idea for this year's theme came from so I started from scratch and I tried to think of different things that you might like or need in a greenhouse and how I could spookify them. So a lot of it was plants that I combined with spooky elements as I'd already been planning on doing. But I also thought about practical greenhouse things like grow lights and water butts and misters and humidifiers and how those could look or function in more of a supernatural sense. It really pushed me to use my imagination and get creative with some problem solving. And as I said before, the more I did, the easier it got. And I started to create this little world in my head and the people that would be using these things. In terms of outside inspiration, I've been watching a lot of history videos on YouTube recently, short documentaries about the Victorian era, and I really like the old journals and guides that they used to have and the illustrations in them. So that's where that kind of vintage look came from and the tone of the captions that I used. So that I hope should answer the questions that I've had about the backstory, the ideas and the themes. People also wanted to know to what extent I planned my drawings, if I knew what I was going to do from the beginning, or if I decided each day what I would draw. I don't think I'd be able to manage coming up with an idea every day. The way I keep up momentum during a challenge like this is taking away some of the decision fatigue or decision paralysis from as early as possible. So when I came up with this idea, I decided on every drawing I would do, as in what each thing would be, and then I started putting them in order of which I wanted to do first and which ones might look good next to each other. I knew what sketchbook I would be working in, so I made a rough sketch of the number of spreads, and then I started mapping out what might go where and how they vaguely might look so nothing detailed but it gave me an, a guide an idea and it also helped me figure out how each thing could be laid out on each page to make the most of the number of pages I had I would definitely do things like this again because it really just saved me so much time every day not having to think about which drawing I was going to do and how many pages it should be on and where the text might be in relation to the previous pages and how that might look in the scheme of things even though I was really flexible when it came to sticking to the plan or just going with whatever felt right on the day, it was nice to have that foundation there to start with and I was able to work on things as a whole from the beginning. Okay, let's see if we can quick fire some questions from Instagram. Did I use references? Some drawings were entirely from my imagination. For some, I looked at different elements in pictures, but nothing is drawn directly from one image and I would say 60% I didn't look at any reference at all. Was it stressful? At times, especially towards the end, it just got a bit exasperating, a bit monotonous. I missed using paint, but that said, I do find something a bit relaxing in the routine of a drawing challenge, knowing more or less what you're going to draw every day and how. Average amount of time spent on this per day, I would say maybe 45 minutes per page. As time went on, I spent a lot less time sketching and planning. I think the first one took about two and a half hours altogether because I drew it on a separate piece of paper and then tried to recreate it in the sketchbook just so it could be perfect, <laughs> so I would know exactly what I was doing. And then after that, I got more and more open to making mistakes. Was that enough time or did you feel overwhelmed by the pull of other projects? I allowed myself to make this the priority, which was great at the time, but not so great now. Now that it's over, I do feel a bit lost. The inspiration that I'd been building up last month has been fizzling out and I'm kind of floundering around wondering what to do next and just trying to remind myself how to paint. Uh, process for idea generating fictitious plants. As I said, it just came down to thinking of a plant and combining it with something dark or spooky and then thinking about how that might work. Sometimes I thought of the name of it first or the function and then I thought about how it might look. Okay, and finally, one of the most popular questions, will there be a printed copy of this book for sale? And yes, there will be. It's actually available for pre-order now, so I'll have that link below. It'll be available for the next two weeks from now, after which I will start sending them out. And I hope that that means that everyone that wants one should get a chance to get one without me having to keep them in the shop all year round. 
And I think that's where we'll leave it as we look through the book as a whole. I really hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. It's probably one of my favourite art things I've ever done and I'm looking forward to doing more like it. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you soon for the next video. Bye.